Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome our Towson University alumni, faculty, staff, and friends. I'm Margaret Paulson, the Young Alumni and Student Outreach Coordinator and a proud 2011 TU graduate. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar, A Budgeting Tell All. Joining me today from the TU Alumni Relations team to help with this presentation is Steve Rosenfeld, the Director of Alumni Communication and Recognition. Today we have alumni from 1977 to 2021, joining us from eight different states, including California, Georgia, Maine, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Washington. Before I introduce today's speaker, I wanna share a few housekeeping notes. This session is being recorded and will be shared with all event registrants when it is finalized. Attendees will remain muted throughout the discussion. And if you have any questions, please use the chat function in your window and direct your questions to everyone. We will be monitoring the questions throughout the session and we will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. I'd now like to introduce Ryan Benkin. Ryan is a 2005 graduate and is currently working at Worthington Financial Partners and is a registered representative with Equity Services, Inc. He has over 14 years of experience in the financial services industry and is committed to working with and educating people on the basics of budgeting, savings, and financial success. Ryan received his bachelor's degree in sociology from Towson University and his master's in business administration from University of Maryland University College. Ryan, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, Margaret. I appreciate it. Um, that, all, all, that, that introduction just took um, probably two and a half slides off of what I have for everyone today. So I don't know what I'm going to have to do to, to fill that information in. Um, so um, everyone, thank you, uh, everyone for on the line. I can't see you, but thank you for, for joining me today and, and welcome. Um, I'll be sharing a short presentation via PowerPoint shortly. Um, it's a roughly 13 slides. I promise you, I will not PowerPoint you to death uh, and we'll keep this short and sweet as uh, most of us may have been already zoomed out or WebExed out over the last 12 to 18 months uh, with the uh, pandemic. So without further ado, I'm gonna pull up the PowerPoint and, and get going. Uh, bear with me here for a second as I get it up on the screen for you. Okay, so a budgeting tell all. So uh, Margaret had just gone over the logistics of, of the, uh, the next hour, but um, like she said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them uh, into the chat function. Margaret will be overseeing the chat. Uh, and certainly will be able to answer those questions either throughout the presentation or formally at the end. So we will certainly be able to answer them at some point before the end of the presentation. Um, also to set the stage now, um, budgeting can be a, a is a personalized um, situation. So, um, at the end of the presentation, you'll see you, everyone on the line would, would have the ability to set one on one time up with me uh, in the future to to go through the specifics of your budget, the specifics of your questions. The 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 the, the goal here um, is that I'm here to help. And sometimes that's all that it takes to get someone on board with their budget. Uh, whether it be back on track or setting setting them on track for the very first time. Um, so, so today's presentation will be tips and tricks on budgeting, as well as sharing some resources um, that may help you along the way. So just a little bit about me, um, just so you have an understanding of who I am and where I've come from. So to, to the start, so just like Margaret said, I'm a graduate of 2005 uh, at Towson, and I'm a proud alumni. Um, I was just there last week for the first time in a few years, and um, man, does it look different, uh, but different in such a great way. I'm so proud to be an alumni uh, and, and see all the work that is being done on campus. It, it seems to be ever-changing at this point. It certainly looked a lot different when I was there, but um, so, 
Uh, I came from Long Island, right? So born and raised in Long Island, uh, started Towson in 01, and quickly started work at Burdick Hall, which doesn't look the same as it does now. Uh, I worked for um, sports clubs, room 150, if any of you remember. At that point, we had 15 sports clubs, and we were allocated about $150,000 per semester from the SGA, the, the Student Government Association. And I was, um, you guessed it, their financial director for three and a half years. So I was responsible for uh, overseeing the budget and allocating money as teams requested it over, over the years. Uh, it was a great job, met a lot of great people. Um, I also was an orientation leader uh, my sophomore and uh, senior year. Um, and you know, it took that time to meet with incoming freshmen in the summertime to get them acclimated to campus. Another great, uh, another great way to meet people. Uh, fortunately, not nothing having to do with money at that point. That's just people. A little bit of uh, the start of who I am. I love working with people um, and educating and advocating for them. So the process graduated in 05. Uh, took a job with Enterprise Rent a Car right out of right out of school, reluctantly, um, but uh, really set the foundation for sort of my my career with regards to the foundation of organization and structure. A um, couple of years after that, I was recruited into Wachovia Bank, so 2007, and that's where my financial career really began. And um, I started to work with people on the on the sales desk and worked my way up from Wachovia, left Wachovia when Wells took over in 2011 and was with, has have been with M&T Bank, was with M&T Bank for 10 years. Worked my way up from an assistant branch manager to a branch manager to a regional manager and oversaw the 11 branches in uh, Hartford County. Well, and then the pandemic hit. And so like most of you on the line, uh, was faced with some level of, of, an, of a decision, right? Uh, mine was whether to stay with what I was doing, maybe for another 10 years, or make a change. Well, I decided to make a change, and I decided to make a change to go back to working one-on-one -on -one with people like I am today here with all of you to help advocate uh, and educate them on anything financial, budgeting, retirement, insurance, uh, life, right? Um, anything that comes to helping them along the way, yeah, I'd love to do. And that's why I'm here today. So the now, like Margaret said, I'm a financial professional with Worthington Financial. We're a small firm in Timonium, uh, just a hop, skip and a jump away from campus uh, and live in Hartford County with my wife and two kids. Um, the, uh, the goal with what I do, like I just said, working with families, individuals, folks like yourself um, along the way um, in, with anything financial. So the agenda for today, very, very to the point. So the importance of budgeting uh, is the theme of today's conversation. You'll, you'll feel that along the way. Um, the five W's. So we'll cover five slides that will encompass the, the why, the what, the who, the where, and the when all with regards to budgeting uh, and that all make up a successful budget and then lastly we'll um, we'll have a slide on resources but we'll be talking about resources along the way and then next steps so next steps to help you either create or get back on track to the budget your budget so a poll question for all of you and what's going to happen here is um, the uh, the options for answers are going to uh, pop up in the chat function, um, if I'm correct, Steve. Um, so, oh, oh, here it is on the screen. So here's the question. How many Americans today do you think use a budget? So we'll take the next you know, 15, 20 seconds. Choose letters A, B, C, or D with what you think the right response is. And then I'll be sharing it on the screen. Uh, 
Ryan, and while we're waiting for folks to answer the poll, we just had a quick question. Are you certified as a CFA? I am not certified as a CFA. Um, what I, I what I do have is I have my life and health licenses, and I'll, I also have my Series 6 and 63. All right, so uh, we're going to close it up. Let's see. So the right answer, we have 6 of 16 responses correct with 30%. So 30% of, of Americans and American families today have a budget. Uh, so that might be something alarming to you. That might be something that uh, you're not surprised about, but uh, certainly relevant to our conversation today. Uh, a couple other statistics I thought that would be uh, helpful, helpful to share. Um, the average credit card debt is just over $6,000. And approximately 40% of Americans have less than $300 in their savings account. So numbers and statistics always get me, right? And sometimes up here and sometimes here, uh, but nonetheless, uh, they are what they are, right? And so, you know, you have to decide where do, where do you want to fall, right? Where are you now and where do you want to fall with, re with regards to those percentages? Um, all right, so the why. I'm a big why person. I like to understand sort of the, the behind the scenes of how things work. Um, so the pyramid, why are you looking at a, a pyramid picture, right? Um, the main thing is because of its strong base, right? The only way for the pyramids to stand and still stand today is because of the strong foundation. And that's how we can relate a budget to that, right? The budget creates a strong foundation to your finances. Um, we used to use a pyramid-like structure at the last bank I worked at um, and sort of cash management and budgeting was at, was at its base. Um, so why foundational? A little more there. So it sets the tone for how your money comes in and how your money goes out. So whether that be uh, daily, weekly, or monthly, um, most of my best interactions uh, start with the budget. It uh, gives us both a level playing field, myself and the client, of, of where to start. Um, and gives a good understanding of where we need to go, right? Because sometimes the budget that someone has is really good, and it's really it's really great to take a moment and to celebrate that. Um, and sometimes it's a mess, but that's what I'm here for, right? Help and accountability to to get you where you want to go. So necessary. Why is it necessary? So. To try to relate this to, to real real life situations. So think about this. You are a parent with a, a teenage uh, teenage um, son or daughter looking to buy uh, them their first car. What I will assume that most of you will not do is give them a blank check and have them walk into the dealership of their choice and pick out a car, right? The same story would relate to all of you. You would not likely do that for yourselves either, right? Um, you have an idea of what you can afford based on your bank account or what you were pre-approved for before you go buy that car. And that's your budget, right? You know what you can fit in. Whether it was you know, uh, um, a process that you had to sit down and write it out before you went, or you had a good idea of what your, your payment could be based on your last car payment, that's a budget, right? It, it's being sure that your expenses are less than your income. So applicable. Um, so what do I mean by that? So uh, applying a budget, um, you can apply a budget to any financial goal that you have. Um, that could be down payment on a home or a car, it could be retirement. It could be buying an engagement ring. It could be determining how much college tuition you can afford for your child or children, right? Sometimes there's multiple. Sometimes they're in at the same time. You know, how do we finance that? How does that look like? How am I going to afford it? Um, and then there's life events, 
unexpected life events, uh, a job loss, a pandemic, right? Life, life happens. Great things happen and unexpected things happen. So a budget can be applied uh, proactively and it could also be applied reactively. Sometimes we just don't know, like the pandemic, that things are gonna happen. A fun fact I forgot to share about the pyramids. Uh, I looked this up. Um, pyramid stones weigh more than an elephant. I uh, wouldn't have known that ever if I didn't look it up. So if you take away anything, that's a great one. Um, okay, so the what? So there's two formal types of budgeting. We have the envelope method and we have the zero base method. Some of you may be doing this today. The envelope method. So this I refer to as a real old school methodology that has been easily digitized today. So imagine this, um, your grandmother, right? Sets aside six envelopes at the beginning of the month and writes on them in marker, rent, groceries, entertainment, car payment, right? Those are filled out as the month starts and the amount of money that goes into each envelope is written on there as well. Um, grandmother goes to the bank, cashes her check, takes the cash home, allocates it to each individual envelope. Well, you have a $500 rent payment, that, that $500 from that paycheck is going in, and likely coming quickly out and getting paid to the landlord. Rent has been taken care of. You have entertainment. Let's say you allocate $300 to entertainment for the whole, whole month. Well, the 15th of July hits and that $300 is gone. Well, that means entertainment is complete for the, the month and that's it, right? It forces your hand to stay um, diligent to the money allocated to those particular goals. Um, zero based is a bit more strict. So zero based essentially means uh, zeroing out your income at the end of each month. You can say at the end of each cycle, because every cycle is a little different for each person. It could be a week, could be a month, it could be a quarter, it just depends on your pay. But um, it certainly can apply to, to anyone when it comes to their particular payment cycle. Um, the, uh, but I sort of do a hybrid of the two, right? Um, zero based is very strict, not to say we can't do it, but, um, you know, sort of that is a, uh, that could be like a, a last resort. We need to get someone on track and, you know, that could be places where we start. Otherwise it's a hybrid. It's a, what is it that you're trying to accomplish conversation? And what is it that you're already doing? Right? Because in some way, shape or form, most of us have a budget in the back of our head and we're not just spending willy nilly. Otherwise we would be um, knocking out all the cash in our account and racking up and, and, and racking up the credit card debt. So mm -hmm. most of us have a, 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 an idea of what we can afford, um, but it would be better if we were to have something tangible to refer back to, to hold us accountable and allow us to really save for the things that we should be saving for that we're not yet saving for. Um, the envelope method, and I'll share this in a little bit, um, does, you know, we do have some, some digital options that we can refer to when it comes to the envelope based and even the zero based. Uh, and I'll share that here in a second. So the who, that's easy, everyone. So everyone on the line can benefit from a budget. And um, it also, by making it so generalized, it also disconnects emotion from your money, okay? So meaning that if you were to create a budget and get it on paper and start to allocate for one, the things that you want and two, the things that you need, just on paper, right? It disconnects you from the fact of um, you needing to allocate more to entertainment 
than you really need to and start allocating money from entertainment to savings for the future, retirement, right? College savings, right? Putting it on paper, numbers, dollars and cents, right? Can eliminate the, the need um, to be spending it elsewhere. Or it can really show you that your money is being spent somewhere much more than you thought it was. Um, myself, I'll take myself, coffee every single day can add up, right? And so seeing that on paper can really cause um, someone to, to sort of pause and think about, wow, I mean, that's $3 a day times 30, that's 90 bucks a month. Does that really need to be the case, right? On paper, it's dollars and cents, 90 bucks. And that could be a way to help disconnect the emotion from um, the uh, from your money. And so everyone can benefit from a budget and can, can benefit whether it be something specific or just your lifestyle. So the where, um, the where, there's a way, many different places we can go with regards to um, a budget. And I'm gonna share some examples here in a second. Um, and I'm gonna try not to mess up the, the flow here of the, of the slides, because um, I am no pro, but I'm going to, um, let's see if I can do this without, let's see, without having to do a major mess of sharing and unsharing. Okay, so we have three options. We have creating a spreadsheet, we can download an app and we can use your bank. So I'm gonna show you here a couple examples of an Excel spreadsheet. Let's see here. All right, so Margaret or Stephen, can you let me know if you can see the new Excel spreadsheet or not? At this point, we are still seeing your PowerPoint. Okay, well, let me do this. Okay. Sorry, everyone, we'll get there. Okay, so at this particular point, uh, hopefully you see this, the spreadsheet. Yes, we okay. see your spreadsheet. So this is an example of a standard Excel spreadsheet budget. And um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the particulars as far as the numbers, um, because it's different for everyone. But what I want you to walk away from is that one, sp the spreadsheet's are already made up, right? So if you feel like you don't know where to start and it's just a matter of reaching out for help, this is a tool that I use with 90% of my clients. Um, it's built and we just fill in the numbers based on you. This is an example of, some, of, a, of, a, of a smaller budget, right? So this particular person has income and it, as, you, as we scroll down, we're gonna see um, some household expenses, okay? There's not every particular row is filled out, but at the end of the day, what we were able to do in this example is um, we were able to walk away to show that for this particular client, he was paying $5,400, well, I'm sorry, he had a balance of $5,400 on his credit cards, and we were able to uh, talk through the fact that he could refinance, refinance that into a personal loan and knock his interest rate down from 25% to 7%, right? Something we wouldn't necessarily have known about or thought to think about if it wasn't here on paper, okay? So that was a great takeaway for this particular client to save interest and cut his payments down into a shorter period of time. Um, I'm going to show everyone one more. Let's see. If... Okay, here is another example of a more detailed um, budget. So the first one, um, let me go back to, I'm sorry, the, the, the one I just showed you was a single gentleman in his, I think he's 28. Um, and actually he is taking advantage of some level of, a, of an envelope based budget. Because what we also learned in talking through the Excel spreadsheet is that he is sending his mom 
five hundred dollars. I'm sorry, two hundred and fifty dollars a week via Venmo just for her to stash away in a digital envelope. Okay, for all intents and purposes for him. So, Excel spreadsheet and envelope based sort of all together was the last example. This particular example, this is a gentleman married, a father of three. And as you can see, um, higher income, um, and we just have more trade lines to fill in. So larger debts and more debts. And as we scroll down to the bottom, I'm just gonna move through this a little quickly to show you here at the bottom. This, this particular um, budget led to a conversation mainly around trade line 79. As you can see here, and this was a, a joint appointment with him and his wife, um, and you can see they were both very honest filling this out. This $2,200 a month was during the pandemic, because we met probably six months ago, maybe a little more than that. They were spending $2,200 a month on things. Um, I won't go into detail on some of the things. It's you know all in the up and up, but things. And they came right out and said, now that it's on paper, we knew we were spending a lot on stuff, but we didn't realize how much until they went back and looked at their bank account and saw and came up with $2,200. And so we didn't make any changes here. This is just the facts, but we had a conversation around that and we were able to come to an agreement. Well, they were able to come to an agreement that that should be a lower number. What number should that be that's realistic? And where can that other money be allocated? Or where does that other money need to be allocated? Because with three kids, three boys, we could look to set up something for the kids that isn't set up today, right? Because all three of them in, are gonna go to college essentially. And so is there any college savings saved, saved up? Not yet, not so much. So if we were to reduce that other retail therapy amount, and apply it to a different bucket, right? And have it work for you in a different way. Would that be something you're interested in, right? And that's a lot of the conversation that we have, right? Is reallocating the money to different buckets. So I'm gonna go back to the, um, the PowerPoint. Okay, so that's the Excel spreadsheet. And then Good Budget. So Good Budget is an app that, for one, let me say, it's always best to start on your desktop when creating the budget. And I, sh I share this later on as well as a tip. But you're going to get a, a more uh, extensive version of the software or the or the or the 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 the, the benefit when you're when you're setting it up on a desktop, then going to your mobile app right where it's on the go but we cover that later too so with regards to good budget i have the uh the hyperlink built in here just so you can see hopefully it uh it works margaret can you keep me honest did it did it switch over to the good budget website it did not okay this is i don't miss this <laughs> uh online okay let's see let's see let's see let's see Okay, so sorry, folks. This is where the link take took me. So, Good Budget um, is a piece of software that would allow you to create the, an envelope-based budget, and you sign in for free, and it's simply um, creating those envelopes, filling them with money. You have the ability to to pull in your your bank account, um, and and go from there. There is a, there's a free option and a, and a, and a pay for option. It's certainly, you can certainly walk away with value from the free option, but it would be up to you to pay a couple bucks a month for the, for the, uh, for the, the monthly fee. I haven't yet had to use the monthly fee option, um, but this is great. It also has an app, but like I said, starting here and seeing all that the website has to offer and on a bigger screen that's just maybe that might just be me but getting it set up here then downloading the free app and having it on the go uh, is always my best advice okay 
So good budget, a great envelope based budgeting tool. Going back to the PowerPoint, I'm hoping I'm you know not uh, making everyone's eyes go crazy with regards to back and forth. So lastly, your bank. So I worked in the bank for 15 years. So I know that the last few banks I worked at do have um, budgeting tools. Some of them on their websites are more prevalent than others. Some of them are working behind the scenes already for you. And if you were to go find it on their hard, on their um, their website, you would see that it's be it might be built into a nice um, a nice pizza pie for you and allocated in color. Sometimes you might have to create it from scratch, but nonetheless, most large banks, if not all, I say that you know I don't want to guarantee anything, but most large banks and many credit unions do offer budgeting tools on their website. I did see. A, um, a question pop up around whether I um, would refer to or recommend the app or the spreadsheet. So I, just personal preference when it comes to me, I prefer the Excel spreadsheet only because um, I've been using it longer and there's more wiggle, will, wiggle room to play around with. Um, changing numbers on the fly, and it you know it you know you change one number here, it impacts the you know the 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 um, the you know the um, the cell to the left of it or the right of it based on addition and subtraction. Uh, so I'm a bit old school when it comes to the Excel spreadsheet, uh, but when the good budget is introduced, sometimes by a client, um, I'm happy to use that as well. But Excel spreadsheet for me. So where Excel spreadsheet, right? Somewhat old school, good budget. Now has a website and an app, which is a bit newer school. Certainly didn't have, have that when I graduated in 05. Uh, and then your bank, more and more banks now more than ever are offering these free resources and tools to get folks managing their money better. Okay, so they're all out there free for you to use. Okay, one more poll question. Um, so how many American families had their finances affected by COVID-19? We'll just take 15 or 20 seconds to, to choose the option that you think. Okay, so the correct answer, thanks Steve for, for taking care of these pollings for us. The correct answer is uh, 63%. So 63% of families had their finances affected in some way based on the pandemic. Um, on the upside, you know, to walk away from this slide uh, feeling better, 44% um, of Americans expect their finances to improve this year, right? So people are feeling good that they will be on an uptick after the 18 months of the pandemic. But, you know, the, the pandemic is something that we're all probably exhausted about talking about. But the fact is, is that it create it's created a ripple effect. And some of those ripple effects uh, are, are realized already, and some of them have not. And so finances are one of them that uh, are likely more so not realized because not everyone is back on track. Not everyone may have that job back. Not everyone may be uh, out of that hole where they were put into debt because of the pandemic. So, you know, in general, if, if your finances were impacted and you need help getting back on track, a budget is a good place to start. And if you need help to, to hold you accountable, or to advocate and educate you a bit further, that's where someone like myself comes into play, right? Okay, so when? 
The win is the win is uh, fairly simple as well because it's right now. There's no better time than the present to start. Um, accountability is a great reason to start. Right, holding yourself accountable will keep you going. Working with someone will 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 strengthen the ability for it to keep going. Like I just said, and whether that person comes in to to set up or help you strategize or just simply support you. Um, it's it's great when a, when, a, when a budget is created and also tangible, something that you can hold, something you can put on the refrigerator, something that you can put on your phone in your notes section that you, you, you view every day. Um, if it's on paper, right? If you wrote it out in pen, sometimes people wanna do that because it's, it's more of a physical act of creating it, um, whatever it, it takes. Um, that is dependent on you and the type of person that you are, whatever will help you. But sometimes it's about talking through what option might be best for you. Again, and here's why I go back to, to creating it at home on the desktop and then managing on the go. That's my, my best recommendation. Um, then trying to create it on your phone and, and you're not going to have all the capabilities and it's smaller and you might be, you know, you might get fed up quicker. Um, and walk away from it. So desktop is best. Okay, so next steps. If you don't have a budget, just know that it's okay. You're certainly not alone, right? There's 62% of other, other families out there that don't have a budget as well. Everyone needs to start somewhere and needs a little help and support, like I've said throughout this presentation. Um, I've been helping folks budget for the last 10 to 15 years. And from my time sitting at the bank, at the desk, folks coming in, helping them balance their checkbook, looking at those trade lines, like I showed you on the Excel spreadsheet with regards to the credit card debt. And knowing that if someone's paying the minimum payment due on their, on their credit card payment, then typically that minimum payment due is 4% of the balance, the total balance. So being able to calculate that times three to four credit cards, I easily had an idea of what that person's credit card balances were total and can determine and talk through, would you be interested in a consolidation loan? Did you know that was an option? And then talking through how much savings that could be in their budget that they could apply elsewhere. So you just sometimes never know how the budget can help until you sit down and really talk through it. Don't wait. Um, acting now, right? When you when you when you treat a budget as a foundation, it makes for a more effective conversation about your finances every single time. My most successful conversations with folks about their finances start with the budget, hands down um as long you know you have to be you have to put your pride aside and your ego aside and be vulnerable enough to talk through the budget if there is if there's a gap right and you know that's what a professional is here to do i'm here to help you through that right and uh you know sort of you know keep you in the game and talk you out of of, of throwing your hands up in the air and also lastly you have my email here so like i said in the beginning i'm here to help and that you can be reached by reach me by my email or with technology being, being as awesome as it is these days, you can use this QR code. If you hold up your phone to the QR code at a certain distance, um, what will happen is it'll um, and you take a picture of it. It'll pull up a link to my LinkedIn page and you can have the ability to contact me that way. You also can have the ability to learn a little bit more about me and get a better understanding about what I do and how long I've been doing it via LinkedIn and can certainly message me on LinkedIn to set up a time to chat. Um, I don't have any real parameters uh, with regards to how long it will take to, to connect with someone, uh, how many times it will take. Um, it, it's different for each person. So certainly don't, don't, uh, don't count yourself out from contacting me with uh because you think you know i might take up you know you might take up too much of my time that's certainly not the case i'm happy to help uh be an advocate and educate you on what we can do to help you you know budget the way you want to budget
some resources here you know we have to of course give give um, um, reference to the pictures and uh, on 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 the, on the PowerPoint and then some of the websites here you know both Microsoft and good budget are where you would go directly uh, in order to get some of the um, the resources we shared today and then some words to live by here um, whether I've covered them today or not in the in the conversation let me move my little box here so variable expenses break the budget they certainly do right the fixed fixed payments of rent and car payment um and groceries to a degree that have to happen are there but it's the variable ones that hurt okay so you want to be able to account for them in the budget using cash for specific wants uh if once you run out of it almost like an envelope based procedure uh once you run out that's it okay turning off auto load functions right like so like the apps for duncan or starbucks um, once you hit like a certain dollar amount, it'll it'll auto reload to the next 10 bucks or 25 bucks. You know, that could hurt too. That could certainly hurt too, because if, if as long as there's money on there, you know, I'm getting a coffee or I'm getting an XYZ. And then lastly, choosing a plan, tracking your progress, automate your savings, which means having your savings for yourself, having that come out of your account automatically. So it's just being done behind the scenes, right? similar to your 401k hopefully right you're, you're adding to it before your you know your pre-tax money you're letting it ride you might not even check your balances that often but it's there being gr growing for you for for later on and then revisiting your budget often and then lastly this wouldn't be a, a Towson presentation without go tigers right so um i'm going to unshare my screen Let's see. Okay. All right. So, it looks like we have a question about um, zero based. Would you be able to share a little bit more information about zero based? Would I be able to share a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, was there a bit more information in the question, Margaret, that I could? be a bit more specific to the area that they have questions about or? Um, just in general. Just in general. So um, just in general, the envelope based, um, I think, you know, it's sort of, you know, what folks had to do, um, let's say, you know, our grandparents' generation, in order to save money, right? In order to budget, right? There were no there were no apps, there were no spreadsheets, and they knew that their paycheck created their budget. And so they had money coming in and money that needed to go out and things that had to be paid for. So the envelope based creates the structure necessary to allocate money to the, the fixed payments that have to happen, like rent, like car. Um, and there's some that have to happen that you really can't put a dollar amount on because it's not a it's not fixed on a statement, like groceries, uh, like gas. So you have to you have to know your own sort of lifestyle. And that might mean starting now and looking at okay what did i pay last year for last month for groceries and if it was four hundred dollars for the month well is there wiggle room there if you're looking to pay for something else can you lower that grocery bill from 400 to 350 and allocate that 50 dollars somewhere else if it's well i tried and it's hard because i have a family of five well then okay Groceries stay where they are. Let's look at the other envelopes that you've created and let's see how we can allocate and move some money around. All right. So, it, it, you know, it's this, uh, this sometimes it's, it's this, this delicate dance of, of just reallocating your buckets uh, when at all possible. And then also, it's also looking at sort of within your budget and within those fixed payments, are there ways to do something there? Refinancing a mortgage. Um, refinancing a car loan, the credit card consolidation, um, 
sometimes it might mean um, that rent is way too high. And talking about where the money, where the rent payment needs to be, and what that look, what needs, what that needs to look like. So sometimes it's a, it can be real deep conversations about you know making some real changes. I hope that was helpful. Okay, and then it looks like we have it was helpful for for Mildred. So thank you so much. Um, and then just another question from Kayla: Is credit from a credit card considered income since it's technically money that she has? Is no, so I would not consider credit on a, on a credit line uh, income. And from the simplest version, I would just say that because it's not earned, right? Um, so no, it's not income. So your your income would be you know based on what you've earned at work. Um, then you have some other forms like you know social security, disability. Those are sort of the three you know three major ones for now. When you retire, um, you may have you know a pension. You may have uh, annuity income. Your four hundred four hundred one k distributions. But no, I would not consider credit card uh, limits as what I thought the question was. Credit card limits as income. You're welcome. Perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Sure. All right. So doesn't look like we've had any more questions come in. So Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today and leading us through understanding budgeting and how we can make it work for ourselves and how we can accomplish goals and dreams with budgeting. Thank you. Late April 2021. TU publicly launched RISE, a $100 million comprehensive campaign and the first of its kind in the 155-year history of our university. Towson's RISE is fueled by our most closely held value, which has shaped our history and charts for the course of our future. Put students first, and this campaign does just that. To date, even in the midst of a global pandemic, we have raised more than $68 million and the generosity and commitment of our alumni and greater TU community continues to grow. We invite you to rise with us and learn more at rise.towson.edu. We hope you can join us for some of our other upcoming events. In August, we will be having an in-person crab feast at Jimmy's a Famous Seafood here in Baltimore. In early September, we will be traveling to Pennsylvania to hold an alumni night at Moon Dancer Winery. And at the end of September, we will be heading out to Denver, Colorado, and also going to California to take on the San Diego State Aztecs uh, for our football team. So you can register and learn more about these events at alumni.towson.edu slash events. Make sure you follow the TU Alumni Association on our social media channels and on Tiger Connect our alumni online community. Thank you and we hope to see you next time. Thanks everyone.